Hi, I'm Mary Ann Kahn. And I'm Mike Rushford. And we have a project to recover a dining room chair. Now this is a project that's going to be easy. It isn't like the sofa in the living room. It lets you kind of get your hands wet and... Uh, but quick. And easy. And easy. Um, what you want to do is when you take the seat pad off of the chair itself, you want to make sure that you mark which pad goes with which chair. If you've got six of them, you want to know which one's which. Well, the reason for now, this one here has T-nuts placed in the seat in two areas. Now, this particular one is done at the factory very evenly. The holes are placed, mm -hmm. automated kind of holes. But some of the dining room chairs just have four screws in the corner. Now, each one of those is a little different. Or even so a different angle. You, that's why you want to number them. So you make sure that you get the right seat, right chair, and the screws go in the holes correctly. Okay. Now, you might have um, dining room chairs that have a little taller seat. A box um, seat. A box seat. That is a different application. There's some sewing involved in that. That's not what we're going to show you right now. That may be coming as a later project. But this one, with just the tight Thank seat, you. it's very quick. There's no sewing. You're, we're going to show you how to cut this out and make your patterns, and you're ready to go. You know, and you save yourself. At a shop, we charge anywhere from $35 to $55 for this labor. So, and that's not including the Dacron right. and foam. So if you're able to do this on your own, six chairs, not bad. Not bad. You can maybe save half the cost. Yep. Let's look at some fabric and we'll show you how to cut that out. When you're selecting your fabric, one of the things to keep in mind is that if it's going to be on a seat, it needs to be heavy duty so that as you rub across that seat, you don't go right through it. Um, some of the softer cotton fabrics are not going to work very well. No, they won't. Uh, you want to use an upholstery grade fabric. Something that's a the, little thicker. For the seats. Now, we've chosen this fabric because a lot of people, they think of fabric, they think of it running up the roll as far as the well, pattern. Oh, yeah, here's the selvage. I, you know, I see that. And what we've got here is what they call a railroaded fabric. In other words, the pattern, if you look at it, comes towards us. Uh, the vine comes up and around. Yeah, leaves, into the leaves go up that way and flowers grow yeah. up. They don't so if you looked at it from this direction here, all the flowers would be laying on their sides. I see it. Okay, so I didn't I didn't see that before when I just opened this. So when you said that, it was like, oh, that's why it looked different. Okay. Now what I want you to do is look at fabric in a large area, and all of a sudden you start seeing a pattern come about. Here's a flower, same flower, same flower. So it's on a diagonal. This is a diagonal pattern repeat. Here we have another one where the flower repeats its way. Okay. Okay. We also have that same repeat pattern going like this in a different direction. I see that too. And you know, when I first looked at this fabric, one of the things that I noticed right away were the florals that had more of the orange color in them. These rose colored ones pretty much for me faded to the background. And then when you started pointing out the different patterns, I was like, oh, I actually like these a little bit better. I mean, you, See, know, now, you really have to look at it. What I want you to look at is, let's say a dining room chair seat. Mm -hmm. uh, you're about 19 inches wide, 16 inches deep. So let's say you want to accent the orange. Okay. So what would you put in the middle? I would actually take this one if I was going to put it in the middle. Okay. A couple things happen there. Yep. Let's say that your chair seat's going to come from here to here to here to here you're going to have four places on that seat where the orange is going to show up. Oh. Plus you're going to have a small orange flower here and this rose kind of flower in the middle. All right. Well, I was thinking so of now, this one in the center, though. Yeah, I know. Well, okay. okay, what I'm trying to point out is you can make different pictures and accent different, different colors. Things. Now, if, let's say you take this one and put it in the center. Mm -hmm. But now what happens here, these flowers a little closer together so you're going to have more of the pink, right. pink, pink, pink. I see what you're saying. All right. That makes sense. And you're going to have a pink flower here. So actually your orange is going to be probably one of your lesser colors in this situation. So All right. you have to really look at your fabric and see, maybe put your chair seat right on it and see what it covers. Well, and the other part of it too, I've seen you make patterns where you cut out the center as what you're going to really see so you make like a picture frame and then once you lay that down you get to actually see the picture on the seat before you do any cutting or do anything with that's it. That's a great way for people to do it. It gives you that view that you're going to have as a finished picture. Exactly. 
So it lets you get a preview of what it looked like. Now, you have one other fabric that we wanted to look at. This one, I, it's, you know, railroaded, but the, the other fabric that you had. Now, this one, a paisley. Oh, I like this one, too. All right, again. Um, you now, use any of this. Everybody looks at a paisley differently. Okay. This paisley runs front to back. Mm -hmm. But now, depending on what you want to use off of this paisley, as we're looking at it, you have to look at your patterns, okay? So a repeat on your pattern is here, here, here. You see how it's I going in it. a di diagonal again? This is a diagonal too, right. a little bit different. And also, there's a steeper diagonal here that goes here, that goes here, and works its way up through the, the fabric. Okay. okay? Now... The way you and I are looking at it, I actually like the pattern that, see so you have a vine in here? You know, that was one of the things you pointed out before we started this. And you, you pointed out this vine, and until you said that, my eyes focused on these, not the vine. I love the vine. See, That's very neat. Paisleys are kind of hard to work with sometimes because okay. people look at an individual flower. They don't look at the whole fabric. Right. Okay. So if you look at the way this is set up, your fabric splits and repeats sideways three times. Oh. So if you wanted a, a chair seat center, you would be able to place it here and another one over here right. and have the same pattern. This is really critical because as you're going to go and purchase your fabric, you need to know exactly how much you need for however many chairs you're doing. You don't want to buy fabric and then need to go back to the store and find out that color lot isn't at the store anymore. You want to buy all of it at one time so it's all off the same bolt. And if they have separate bolts, like one runs out, make sure you get all of your fabric out of that same bolt because the colors might just exactly. be slightly different. And you don't want that when you're putting them all on the same application. Even though the chairs are going to be apart, you'll still notice that their colors are just a little bit different. Also, when they talk about fabric repeat on a fabric, that is up the roll. In other words, from this point on this pattern to the same point on this pattern okay. is the repeat. So that one would be about 12 or 14 inches maybe? About 12. 12 inches? Okay. okay. So what you do is you figure your fabric as plain yardage, as if it didn't have a repeat on it. And then you have, a lot of times the fabric places have charts. Charts, it yeah. Says if it's a 6 inch or a 12 inch or a 27 inch, you need X amount of fabric more. But what you really need to know too is if you can get two of them out of one width of the fabric, whichever way, you're, whichever way you're laying them out. Otherwise, I've seen some of them where the, the actual pattern in the very center is you what you want. Be, you have to be careful. And that's going to end up costing you however many yards because you can only get one seat out of each one of those, depending on how the fabric lays out. What happens, there are fabrics out there where you'll have a, a pattern, a pattern, and then one that's different in the middle. Yeah. Sometimes Very tough. those fabrics are hard to work with. Very yeah. tough. The other thing you might run across is that you want to do a stripe or a plaid. The key for stripes and plaids that Michael um, has always talked about is making sure that you center front to back, side to side, and make sure you're starting from those points and that you know exactly where your halfway mark is on each side and front and back so that the fabric ends up being square on it instead of having your stripes go sideways or your plaids being, or even being warped one way or the other where <clears throat> you don't have everything running at exactly the right angles they should. Actually, when you do a stripe or a plaid, they're probably the hardest to put on a seat like this because if they're off just a little bit, if you pull the stripe from one side as you're looking towards the seat, it'll have a little wave to it. So on a seat like this, the easiest way to do it would probably be a pattern, a floral pattern or something. Or just plain fabric. If you yeah. want to try this and you want to just try a plain fabric, that might even be a great way to start because if you've got really no pattern in it... Oh, come on. Get risky. No, no. Sometimes you don't want to. But there's some really beautiful um, upholstery fabrics out there that come in all different yeah. designs, styles. Choose one that you want to really put into your home as far as, you know, all the other decor in your dining room, you know, or, or your kitchen, wherever you're going to place these. Let's get started. Okay.